in the last lecture we discussed about the vortex induced vibrations which is called briefly as VIV. So, two important points we learnt from flow induced vibrations or vortex induced vibrations in the last lecture are the following. One, <coughs> they cause high amplitude vibrations. at a frequency which is approximately equal to half to one third of the natural frequency of the member. So, necessarily resonance may not be set when the vibration frequencies of flow induced vibrations match exactly with the natural frequency of the member. Here is an example when the flow separation takes place, when the flow gets detached from the member, when the member is placed in the steady uniform field of flow, there is a possibility that secondary vibrations can be created, whose amplitudes can be significantly high but they can cause this kind of phenomena not exactly the natural frequency of the member which we address otherwise as resonance in dynamics it can happen even at 50 percent of the frequency. So, one has got to be very careful in designing the dynamic amplification effects on the members when the members are placed in flow field which are interfering the flow field as commonly is the case for marine structures. The second thing what we learnt is the flow induced vibrations are functions of diameter of the member and let us say the orientation of the member. The moment I say orientation, I can also say position of the member. Whether the member is placed closed to the mean sea level, whether the member is made to uh, is placed in between the water depth, whether the member is placed in the direction of inline flow or the member is placed in the transverse direction of the inline flow. So, orientation and position will also affect. The third thing what we understood is V A V can be controlled. I should say rather flow induced vibrations can be controlled. You cannot in control the vortex induced vibration, but flow induced vibration responses can be controlled. There are techniques by appropriate techniques. What we are going to see in this lecture is few of these techniques which has been practically implemented in marine structural design. The moment I understand that there can be appropriate techniques by which the responses caused by the flow induced vibrations can be controlled, then I can divide this in two domains. One control by external means we will see what it is. The other is control by design. 
can also design the system to control this kind of vibration or you can use some external agency, some means, some methods, some techniques to control these vibrations, what we call as appropriate techniques which has been attempted in the literature by the designers in the recent past analytically or in fact in real time applications they have been used. Okay. Let us start looking at these appropriate techniques in different domains of our interest. We will pick up the first domain which we also briefly described in the last lecture, but still for continuity sake we will start from there. We will talk about let us say V A V of risers. As I told you in the last lecture, in this lecture let us re-insist that in the aspect of looking V A V we are not focusing on the hydrodynamic effects or the causes for vortex induced vibration. What we are looking at is in the designers perspective, if the vortex induced vibration is happening, is created, where are they created, why are they created, how are they created, how what are the significance if they are created and the designers perspective can I handle them. So, my whole angle of looking at VAV is not on hydrodynamic perspective, it is on the designer's perspective. Okay. So, if you really wanted to look at the reasons, the equations or the simulations of numerical and analytical studies of VAV on different members, for example, on risers, for example, on cylindrical members, etcetera, I would request you that you should look into some alternate parallel courses which discuss on generation of these kind of responses on members in the hydrodynamic perspective. This lecture will focus only on the designers perspective of VAV effects on members. Is it clear? I made it clear in the last lecture. Let us re-insist again, so that let us not look forward to look at the details of hydrodynamic aspects of flow induced vibration that is not the focus of the lecture at all. Okay. Now, the moment I say risers, most commonly deployed kind of risers in floating structures, because how I am addressing floating structures, because they are the third generation structures these days for deep water oil exploration. So, most commonly deployed risers on the moment I say floating, it includes compliant type structures as well, does not mean always floating structures are drill ships and FPSOs okay. can also be TLPs floating structures is top tension rises. We discussed very briefly about this in the last lecture, but still let us start from this point to understand better how do we handle response control of secondary vibrations which are induced by VIVs. Okay. Essentially risers are links, if you look at risers as a member, risers are nothing but links or connections between the seabed and the top side. For all practical purposes, they can be considered as cylinders. Subjected to lateral loads. The lateral loads can be essentially from wave and current. Of course, you cannot ignore the impact loads caused by the vessels that part anyway we are not discussing here.
So, for dynamic response of risers, one can use the modified Morrison equation. and the lift forces, we have already given you the equations to compute lift forces for this kind of activities. The hydrodynamic analysis is carried out using discrete vortex method. This method is actually based on Lagrangian technique. for simulating the the 2 d potential flow in the compressible and viscous flow. For analysis case, the risers are considered as beam columns subjected to lateral loads, thus essentially comes from wave current etcetera. In addition to this loading, there will be load cost by the pressure difference between internal and external of the riser. I should say a differential pressure between inside and outside of the riser. So, we are now looking for have to actually analyze the different members of marine structures for flow induced vibration. One common technique which people have used for risers is discrete vortex method. Of course, for conducting dynamic analysis of risers or dynamic response analysis of risers people have simply used the Morrison's equation in the modified form and did the dynamic analysis. Of course, they will account for the lift forces also in the analysis. You can find numerous papers in the literature which talks about dynamic response analysis of risers. Okay. The next part 
is V A V of let us say cables. Cables are inherent component of any kind of floating system essentially when we talk about third generation platforms where we are thinking of deploying marine structures or offshore platforms in deeper and ultra deep waters. Obviously, we cannot have the column members for the entire length of the water depth. They are going to be highly and exponentially I mean very expensive. Therefore, people really go for a positive buoyant floating system where the position restraint of the system is essentially held down by group of teethers what we call as tendons or cables. Okay. So, I can say etcetera and the moment we say cables or tendons or teethers you will realize immediately that the cross sectional dimension or the projected area of the cable for the lateral loading from the wave and current is much lesser compared to the top any pontoons or any column members of a floating structure, because they are very large in dimension, because they are positively buoyant, they should have a large draft or large immersed volume. So, they have a very large diameter varying from 12 meters to as high as 16, 17 meters, okay. whereas the cable diameters may vary from 300 millimeters to 400 millimeters and they can be in clusters, they can be in groups. So, the projected diameter which can interact with the fluid flow or which interferes on the fluid domain or the fluid flow field is marginal or very less in comparison to that of the members. Therefore, one can expect that the effect of flow induced vibration on these members will be different from that of a member with a very large diameter, because we already understood in the previous case that vortex induced vibrations are functions of diameter of the members. Okay. So, the projected diameter of these kind of members are relatively small or insignificant compared to the diameter of the column members or pontoon members in a given offshore platform is it not. Then how do we handle VAV for cables, because cables are susceptible to higher order vibrations otherwise, because they are in axial tension and they have a main they have to maintain a specific profile may be a catenary profile because they cannot be always taut mode because, because of the action of the waves in terms of its direction and oblique angles you will always see the T 0 variation in the legs will not be always uniform. There can be slackening happening in the cable, the cable can also be tightened. So, there is always a reversal of forces happening in the cable. So, cable will always not remain in a taut mode system there can be always a slackening happening depending upon the wave action or the set down action of the platform depending upon the swell on the waves. Okay. So, VAVF cables are also handled similarly to the risers. VAV happening on cables is a function of Strahal's number, Reynolds number, mass ratio. We already said what mass ratio is. Okay, we already described what mass ratio in the last lecture and reduced velocity. First of all, we must understand why the velocity is getting reduced. Whenever a member interferes the fluid field, flow field, you will see that because of the group effect on the member, the velocity encountering the member gets retarded or reduced. The reduction in velocity, one may be happy that the force may get reduced, it is not true, it is going to increase the force on the members, and this is what we call as what is the effect which is accounted for in the codes for this blockage factor. Okay. We have already seen the equations given by API for computing the blockage factor whether the members are in single whether they are in clusters or groups. So, reduced velocity creates 
additional forces or increment in force of the members because of blockage effect number one. Number two you see the maximum force not going to happen at the free surface will shift towards the d by 2 of the member or l by 2 of the member okay, half of the length of the member. So, V i V in cables is a function of of course, Stogart's number, Stogart's number is a function of diameter and Reynolds number. So, the following equation values is valid. Where of course, ST stands for the Stogall's number, D stands for the diameter and U stands for the mean velocity component of the flow. M is the mass per unit length that is important to write. And n here denotes the number of modes of simply we say modes of vibration. Now the lift force. As I said we must include the lift force also. The lift force on the cable is given by again I am using an empirical relationship which is f y half rho C L A u plus u of t whole square f of can see the lift forces will be a random phenomena because the time dependent component and the mean component are added ok. C L is the lift force coefficient rho of course, the mass density and F y t F y t in this equation. is cos of omega L of t whereas, omega L is called vortex shedding frequency. In this case, u is set to the current velocity and u of t is generally set to 0 in the analysis. Let us talk about V A V 
on subsea pipelines the primary factor which influences the secondary vibrations caused by the vortex shedding on the subsea pipelines is the proximity of the pipeline with respect to the seabed. If this is my pipeline, let us say of some thickness or whose diameter is d, and this is my seabed. this is my pipeline. The proximity of the pipeline with respect to the seabed is a governing parameter which controls or which induces significantly the secondary vibration on the pipeline which is caused by the shedding vortex shedding frequencies. Okay. Now, one may wonder that how this will vary. Okay. One can think sir, I want to prefix this value, so that the effect of V A V on the subsea pipeline will be lower. You cannot prefix because of the following reasons. Let us say I have a seabed profile, this is a seabed profile, which is of course, not uniform, it is undulating and you lay the pipeline more or less parallel to this thinking that you want to maintain the constant depth or constant gap between the pipeline and the seabed which decreases or tend to decrease the V A V effect on the pipeline. Obviously, you cannot actually have a supported support less length pipeline for a large length is it not because the length of the pipeline has got to be supported at intermediate requirements. So, let us say these are my supports, these are my supports now let us look this problem in a different manner. The unsupported length between the supports of the pipeline will have a variation in this value of y prime anywhere okay you cannot control this because it will vibrate and this variation will occur two because of the seabed scouring okay seabed deposition again this will vary okay and thirdly when any one of the support failed which you could not identify instantaneously you will come to know only after specific point of time the unsupported length of the pipeline increases which causes very high frequency vibrations on the pipeline structurally forget about V A V. A support of A span and the support of B span where B is much larger than A the vibrations induced on the pipeline of the member will be different from that of A. Okay. So, the V A V induced responses on the pipeline are generally low amplitude and high cycle. Interestingly, 
it will affect the fatigue life of the pipeline. Suppose if you have the diameter of the pipeline as D, the diameter of the pipeline as D and the spacing is also D, the spacing is also D for D spacing between the pipeline and the seabed. It is seen that the velocity reduces by a factor of as high as 12. Okay. It has been seen experimentally that the velocity gets reduced. Now, when the pipeline is very close to the proximity, simply it is resting, in this case the velocity increases significantly. Okay. So, people have seen that the ideal design parameter to control the secondary responses on the subsea pipelines, which is induced by vortex shedding frequencies, is simply place the pipeline at a gap of equivalent to the diameter of the pipeline from the seabed. Now, we are talking about pipes which are about HDPE high density polyethylene pipelines of a very large diameter, okay. maybe 10 meters, 8, 6 meters okay, etcetera, especially fabricated pipelines. So, we have to have a gap about 6 meters let us say. So, 6 meter gap you cannot simply leave the pipeline as it is, there are designs which will hold the pipeline in position which are called as anchors. Okay. These anchors or these collars will be placed at uniform spacing all along the length of the pipeline which will make the pipeline to rest indirectly in the seabed by maintaining a gap of D. But this gap of D cannot be ensured because seabed's covering deposition etcetera or dredging etcetera will start affecting this gap and as the pipeline comes closer and closer to the seabed the velocity will keep on increasing. Okay. There is a one important aspect what we want to discuss about the response caused by VAV on subsea pipelines. See essentially the hint or the clue or the suggestion or the guideline given to the designers of marine structures is that see that a gap of D is at least maintained between the pipeline and the seabed. The next application will be response control using what we call VAV spoilers. There are something called VAV spoilers. We all know that VAV is caused by flow separation on a submerged cylinder. And this occurs at the surface of the submerged cylinder, is it not? It occurs at the surface when the cylinder is submerged. 
and essentially this is because due to the flow separation right the flow gets detached from the member. Now by a mechanism if the oscillations caused by this flow separation is dissipated then it is called VAV spoiler you can do this with two ways one can be done by two ways one once the oscillations are caused make them to decay that is one method. The second is do not allow these oscillations to occur ok. Both are called spoilers you either stop them from occurrence or let them form have a mechanism to decay them or to control them or to dissipate them ok. Both of them are spoilers. So, therefore, spoilers are designed for a specific shape so that when they are attached. to the surface of the member they break V A V for there are three categories of V A V spoilers. one is by surface protrusion by helical strikes the other one is shrouds. is nothing but a cover which is perforated around the member. Provide a porous cover around the member this is called shrouds. near wake spoilers near wake st 
stabilizers they are projected plates attached to the member at its surface ok. They are generally located near wake regions. near the wake region that is why they are called wake region stabilizers. Now, VAV can be also handled by a proper design You can understand very well in marine structures that they are peer supported structures in shallow waters. For example, coastal structures they are peer supported structures in shallow waters. Generally piers are circular in shape if you make the geometric shape if this geometric shape is changed by attaching a fin to the shape, then it can reduce V i v. Let us see how the shape will look like. The taper ratio, this taper ratio, this ratio of six is to one is effective. Okay, six horizontal, one vertical that is the taper ratio, this is found to be effective for reducing VAVs. So, instead of having a circular shape, attach a fin to it, instead of having a circular shape, attach a fin and extend it. Okay. So, this can reduce the VAV effect on submerged structures like piers. The third suggestion or the idea or recommendation given by the practical designers seen in the literature for controlling VAV responses are have or ensure smooth surface of the members. So, if you have a smooth surface of the members, it is very well evidently seen in the studies that VAV 
or the responses or the vibrations oscillations caused by V A V on smooth surfaces is significantly lower. In addition we also know that surface roughness is otherwise unavoidable in marine structures because corrosion effects, marine growth etcetera. Okay. And we also know surface roughness alters C D C M coefficients, is it not? C D C M coefficients, right. So, they have in increased effect in the Morrison coefficient C D and C M drag and inertia coefficient forces will be higher. So, it is seen that if you can ensure a smooth surface. So, what is the suggestion as a designer? People are now looking for composite layering on the members. Can I have an epoxy coated layer, can I have an STPE layer, striping layer around the cylinders. So, that the marine growth or the corrosion effects are minimized and the surface remains smooth. It reduces the forces that is one advantage, it enhances the maintainability of the system. Second advantage, third it reduces oscillations due to V A V. Okay. Now, this effect is a later theory of research in marine structures where we call as people look for functionally graded materials. Okay. It is not a new material, it is a composition of various material where the outer cover this is the inner core which actually may member may be steel. The outer covers or outer layers are all different depending upon the applicability what you are looking at, because on the outer surface the stress variations or the stress design may not be an important parameter, because the stress has got to be taken by the inner core. The outer should function essentially for reduction of corrosion effects and reduction of marine growth or formation of smoothness on the surface. So, these characteristics or the functional requirements of this outer layers are different than that of a core layer. When you form a material artificially and combine them as a composite for analysis, we call this kind of material as functionally graded material. Okay. It is a latest area of research where people looking for different kinds of composite aligned together to form a member or a material for a member which can be used in underwater constructions, not necessarily for marine application or marine structures even for bridge piers people are looking for this kind of, because this will enhance the serviceable life of the structure and reduces the forces on the members. Okay. It of course, in the context of the present discussion it reduces effects of V A V on the members. Right. We will have one more application very quickly which will end this lecture. People use external dampers for controlling responses or vibrations caused by V I V. So, materials having
high internal damping like rubber wood or sandwiched let us say or encompassed between the steel sections to improve the damping characteristics. Damping is nothing but energy absorption characteristic, okay. dissipation of energy is damping. To improve the damping characteristics, this is another way by which you can design the system to control the responses caused by secondary vibrations resulting from vortex shedding frequencies. The next application quickly is that helical strikes best example is spar columns. These are all strikes. So, nothing but plates projected circumferentially around the member, this is the original member, the core member, around the member in a helical form. Okay. Now, if I say this is my D, the diameter of the member which is the original core member, then essentially these projections are limited to 10 percent of that 0.1 D. So, these kind of helical projections what we call as helical strikes are found to be very effective in reducing the responses caused by vortex shedding frequencies and members best example is spar columns. You will find helical stake columns in spar members where it has been used, but they have other parallel demerits. What are the parallel demerits of this? Any one demerit, any one disadvantage? Marine growth, surface roughness, projection will increase CDCM etcetera. Okay. There are other parallel effects of this, but this is seen as one of the effective alternative which can reduce responses on the member induced essentially by vortex shedding frequencies. Okay. These are called helical strikes. It has been seen that these strikes avoid lock in formation. So, in this lecture we have quickly seen what are the different methods by which the VAV induced responses can be analyzed. The hydrodynamic aspect of modeling of this VAV formation is not discussed in the lecture. We are looking this in the dizziness perspective what would be the counter effect if VAV is set in in my member. Why are they set in that is what we discussed in the last lecture. So, in this lecture we also summarize that what are the different techniques external internal material design etcetera, how VAV induced responses can be controlled or minimized. As a designer or as an idea where I can use external members or additional members to safeguard me 
original core member from VAV induced responses. Okay. So, this ends this lecture on VAV. The next lecture will talk about one important application of reduction of VAV using porous outer cover on members. We already seen one of the design principles you can use a porous cover. So, we will discuss the experimental and numerical modeling of an example case which we did on a porous outer layer and we see how the forces are essentially getting reduced hydrodynamic forces are getting reduced on the members. So, we are now not focusing exactly the reduction of VAV on the members, but we will discuss how this can be effective in force reduction. Okay, thanks.